Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Thanks for uh, sticking around while I was gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, you may or may not know uh, I was out of the country for 11 days. Uh, I was in Europe, spent 11 days over in Europe and um, got away for a little bit. So I uh, kind of recharged my batteries, refreshed my mind, and uh, uh, it's been good. So um, just now getting back, hopefully you all can hear me. Uh, let's do a mic check and an audio video check. Make sure you guys and girls can hear me and everything. Uh, and that'll be wonderful. All right. Now, since I can't see anything without my glasses, I got to put them on. I don't know how to get the reflection on my computer screens off the glasses, so uh, we'll do that. But uh, uh, thanks for popping in, Dan and Mike and Roger, Andy. And I'm sure some other people will pop in here in just a moment with me being back. Uh, the word might not have spread that classes start again, uh, started or starting again, and uh, kind of go from there. Um, but yeah. Uh, I spent, uh, I got a chance to go over to Europe overseas, uh, uh, which was awesome. It was my first time over in another country, but you know, I, I travel all over the U S and Canada and everything, but it's just not the same. Uh, I got to spend, uh, a couple of days in Paris, a couple of days in London, a couple of days in Amsterdam, a couple of days in Spain, and then three days in Rome and, uh, then come back home. And, uh, it was just, it was a nice Really nice getaway. Uh, it was a really nice time. Really enjoyed it. Like I said, it kind of recharged my batteries a bit. And uh, now we're going to get back to the grind and uh, let's get uh, Spindle TV rocking and uh, get some things going. Now, tonight we're going to talk about some very simple things. Uh, I want to talk to you about CNC boxes. Now, when I was over in Rome, um, I got to visit uh, the Vatican City. And uh, inside the Vatican, I bought uh, a gift for my mother. I bought her a really nice set of rosary. And they came in this really gorgeous olive wood box. Uh, olive wood box with uh, silver, uh, impressed silver, I guess, and, you know, uh, uh, relieved silver, however you would say it. But uh, it's a really nice box. And it's a very simple box. Uh, got some magnets in the lid and some magnets in the base of the box that are really strong. They snap together really well. But uh, it's a, it was a gorgeous box. And it got me to thinking about CNC boxes because this box can be made on a CNC. Now, this box has a decorative profile uh, around the edge and everything. You know, if we look at it, it's got a decorative profile. It's a solid piece. Uh, milled out um, with a decorative profile around the edge. We're going to talk about that later in the class, right? The first part of the class, we're going to talk about the basics of a CNC box, not necessarily magnet. We're going to talk about fitted lids. We'll talk about uh, magnets and things as well. Um, but looking at this uh, box, it got me really inspired about, you know, uh, for all kinds of occasions, there's all kinds of things that you could, you know, a nice little gift box or jewelry box or candy box, whatever the case may be, whatever little box you want to put in it. There's a lot of occasions where a cute, simple little box like this would come in handy. And this is, I mean, the olive wood is absolutely uh, gorgeous. Uh, and I really love the silver, how they did that. I, I'm, I'm, We're not teaching that today because I don't know how they did that, but I almost want to say that, uh, that it was milled with that design and the silver was pressed over it uh, to create that indention or impression. I don't know, but I'd love to find out the technique on that because man, if I could make a box like that, I'd be, I'd be happy. But anyway, uh, but I got this box uh, from within the Vatican city. Uh, like I said, it uh, houses um, my, uh, the rosary. So we'll put those back in there and everything. And uh, but that looking at that box and everything, that gift box, it got me to thinking about CNC boxes. So I wanted to take a look at the simple concept of CNC boxes, whether it be fitted lids or whether it be magnets or whatever the case may be. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, 
um, see if we could teach a little bit of something about it and do a couple of different little styles and, and dig into it a little bit more about, you know, customizing them and decorating them and all these kind of things. So hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this simple little lesson. Now, of course, everything that I'm going to be doing is uh, compatible with Vetric VCard Desktop, Vetric VCard Pro, and Vetric Aspire. But there's going to be a part two to this uh, box class. Uh, part one, this part here, is covering basically box making in VCard, VCard Desktop, and VCard Pro. Now, Part two, I want to cover the box making in Aspire, and it's going to be the same process that we're doing here. Nothing changes as far as that goes, but with Aspire, we have the ability to carve and create three-dimensional designs to where we might be able to kind of create boxes like this, maybe not with the silver or whatever, but you know, be able to create that relief on the top of the box or something, and that's going to be an Aspire project. So I want to separate them a bit, even though that this Part one can be done in all three classes. This, I, I, I classified it as a VCAR tutorial, VCAR Desktop, VCAR Pro, because part two is going to be classified as an Aspire tutorial because the things we cover in the, the part two is going to be modeling or creating some kind of models for the nice lid or inside, whatever the case may be, wherever we want to put it, you know, put it and stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me twisted. We can still do models and things in desktop and pro. We have models that we can work with. We can go online to designandmake.com, eBay, Etsy, whatever the case may be. Uh, we can find 3D models and we can, or we can use the models that come with the software and we can bring them in, you know, and put them on the box and all. There's nothing wrong with that. We can absolutely do that. But what I'm talking about is customizing and modeling a 3D model, which is, able to be done in Aspire. You know, I wouldn't show an Aspire project and just show existing models and things and stuff. I probably would. I'd be tweaking them a little bit, but I'm talking modeling. We're going to make a model and customize it to one of our boxes or what have you. So there'll be a part two that's going to be an Aspire tutorial uh, for any of you that want to uh, join me next week for that. And that will be next week. That'll be next Tuesday. Um, okay. Well, Hold on, let's look at the calendar because, you know, Christmas is around the corner. Let me see what even next Tuesday is. Next Tuesday is Christmas Eve. Um, should we have a class on Christmas Eve? Uh, most of you guys and girls are going to be with your families. That might not be good. Uh, let's see here. Oh, with Christmas holiday and the holiday, next week might be out of the question. Um, hmm. Then we might have a part two later this week. We'll have a part two later this week. Uh, and we'll do part two of it later this week. Maybe like a, um, uh, maybe like Thursday or something. Not Friday because everybody wants to go out and party on Friday or something and all that stuff. But uh, maybe Thursday. We might, we might, in a couple of days, we might have part two of this class talking about models. Yeah. Let's set it. It's scheduled. All right. So. Um, yes. And, uh, and Michael, Michael Bell, Michael Bell said the same thing I just said, right? So, uh, he says you can do a 3d carving on the top in V carve software. Absolutely. Absolutely. Michael, Michael's absolutely right. That's why I said, don't get me twisted. I'm not talking about doing 3d models. I'm not customizing and creating a 3d model to put on the box. That's going to be the stuff that's fired to go. So way to go, Michael, jumping on that. Uh, you know, you, you caught my, my, and that's what made me correct myself and stuff. Um, Jeff jumps in and says, uh, hey, are you using VCAR Pro 10? Uh, yes, uh, I'm using 10. And everything that you I, I'm doing in here can be done in 8, 8.5, 9, and 10, you know, uh, nine, and 9.5. Uh, so is there, I'm not, you know, doing anything that can't be done in the earlier version of programs. But yes, Jeff, I am using version 10. Um, highly recommend, you know, if uh, keep your software up to date. But sometimes... If you have to pay for those updates or whatever, it might be a little salty, especially for you Aspire users and stuff. And I can understand that, especially around the holiday time. But if you ever get the opportunity, update your software. It'd be cool. Okay. All right. So let's get off of me 
and let's get into the software. And we're going to talk about the basic concepts. And in the first part, I'm going to be talking about fitted lids, uh, making boxes with fitted lids and everything. And um, I'm going to talk about the three or the, the main components or the main vectors of that fitted lid uh, type design box. And, um, and then we'll go into different shapes and, and things like that. Uh, so hopefully that was a good enough introduction. Let's get into it. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do for you guys and girls is I'm going to change my screen resolution so everything is nice and big for you. So stand by while I do that. I'm going to minimize this screen here and I'm going to go into my display settings. <clears throat> and I'm going to come down here and change my resolution for you. And then we're going to pop back into the uh, Vetric software. Ooh. We'll let that go away for a minute. Do, 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 do. Let's go back to my camera and let's refresh that screen. Whoa. What's happening there, Hoss? Oh, standby. <laughs> Sharing the wrong screen. Sharing the wrong screen. I was wondering why I was going crazy. There you go. That's a little bit bigger for you for those icons and stuff. You can see them much better now, right? Nice and clear. And um, uh, let's let's say this just real quick. Um, it's hot in this room that I'm in, and I have a fan running. I'm hoping that my screens in front of my microphone are blocking the sound of the fan. But if you hear a humming, mm -hmm, that's my fan. Let me know if you hear it and I'll go ahead and shut it off. All right. So let me know if you hear it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about um, our boxes a bit. And let's close this and let's get over to our drawing side and everything. And let's talk about our boxes. Right now, I have a very simple, kind of a triangular shaped box. And um, on this box here, I've got the lid. Now, the lid's going to be pocketed out. Uh, this inner area here, the inner area of this vector, is going to be pocketed out probably about three-eighths of an inch deep. And in the bottom of that pocket, I'm going to do some V carving, a little nice little note or something or what have you inside that lid. So when that lid's open, there's a nice little V carving graving inside. OK, so we're looking at the inside bottom of the lid, if you will. And this area is going to be pocketed out. And the distance between the inside of the pocket and the edge of the profile, that's going to be my lip. That's going to be the rim of the lid that's going to fit on the inside or the outside of the inside of the box. So this is going to be this, this, this vector here is the bottom of this particular box. And you see, we have a lot of vectors. What we have when in terms of vectors is if we have, we have the two inside pockets that are going to get pocketed out. And we're going to re, we're going to draw these so you can see how to draw them. I just had some ready to just talk about the different components. We got the inside pockets here. These two areas here are going to be the inside pockets. And then the distance from the inside edge of the pocket to this vector here is going to be a wall. Okay? It's going to be a like kind of a a wall, a little ledge. And then from the outside of this vector to this, not that vector, not that vector, to this vector, that's going to be the pocketed area where this limb, lid rim slides down and fits on. So if we were to look at the 3D view of this, you would see that I have the pocketed areas. And uh, most, most times I flock the inside of my boxes or I'll use some self-adhesive felt from Hobby Lobby or something, you know, and 
uh, cut it out to shape, you know, and put it in the bottom of the pocket. So I colored it green just to kind of give that impression. But on the bottom of the box, so there's a lip here that that wall that the rim of the outside fits over. And it's a nice pressure fit. And when we're creating that tool path, when we're creating that pocket cut or that pocket cut here, uh, tool path, we got to give a little bit of an allowance. And on that allowance, if I don't give an allowance, man, it's going to be such a tight pressure fit. It would be uncomfortable trying to get the box lid to fit on nicely. So we want a very small allowance, but we don't want the allowance so big that it's sloppy, that the lid just, just falls off. If I turn the box upside down, the lid just, there's no friction fit. It, you know, it's just fall. It just falls off. So generally what I do is either on the inside pocket here or the pocket here, and it's usually on the lid that I do it. Um, I give myself an allowance of 0 0.005, five thousandths of an inch. And I, I, I want to sneak up on it. And generally I don't have to go any further than that. A five thousandths of an inch allowance gives me a nice friction fit to where the lid will just suck right on there. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of a vacuum because of the pressure and stuff, but man, it, it, it slides on, it fits nice and snug. Uh, I could flip that box, throw it up in the air. I could do whatever that lid's not coming off, but when I want to take it off, it's a nice, nice, uh, uh, it comes off nicely. And, and sometimes the friction fit is so nice. There's actually a little bit of a suction and you hear that noise when you pop it apart and everything. Um, you know, so, and I don't know if you heard that little popping noise. I was trying to make a popping noise with my mouth, but, uh, it's really, you know, it's a nice fit. So 5,007 inch, 0 0.005. Now, uh, pause for the cause. Uh, Dave Gatton, welcome buddy. Thanks for popping in. I'm doing very well. I hope you're doing well. Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Okay. So, um, so basically the design of a fitted lid box, no matter what shape it is, you're going to have the same type of vectors you're going to have for your lid. You're going to have your inside pocket. And then of course the profile and for the box itself, you're going to have the pocket area where, you know, the cavity, if you will, that, you know, whatever's little trinkets are going inside of it. You're going to have the wall, which is the distance between these two vectors. And then you're going to have a ridge that's milled down so that the lip of the lid can fit on. Now we have this extra vector out here and this extra vector, basically what that is, is that vector allows me to create a pocket tool path between this vector here and this far outside when it's only a 30 second 03125.03125 offset from the outside profile cut. And it allows the bit to go over that edge just so that I get a nice clean uh, lip here and I don't have any little phrase or anything. So that's what gives me a nice, clean lip right here. Because that bit, when it pockets out, it goes over that edge a little bit. So that when I do that profile cut, I get a nice, clean edge. I don't have any little splinters or anything or anything that I've got to sand, you know, and stuff and all. So let's talk about this uh, design. I have two simple designs here. One is just very a very basic box, right, with a, a wide open cavity inside there. And the other one has a decorative curve in it, decorative curve. And so let's take a look at this box and how I made this curve so that I can use my quarter inch router bit to do the whole job, except for where the V cuts being done. My quarter inch router bit is going to do the whole job, uh, except for my V cut did and done. So I have these eighth inch radius, quarter inch diameter kind of curves in here. So when I'm doing that inside pocket, I get a nice clean cut. So let's take a look at this uh, design and um, let's take this here. I'll take this vector and I'm going to copy it over to a new layer. And I'm going to call this uh, class triangle without the capital R angle box drawing. Okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and 
leave that active, click OK. And let's go ahead and come in and turn off all the other layers that I have visible. And I'm going to make this layer bold in the layer box, the drop down layer box. I'm going to make it bold so it's the active layer, meaning when I'm drawing on this layer, it's going to be active. So I've got a general shape here. Uh, it's just a very simple triangle. Uh, this triangle happens to have inch and a half diameter circles here with a one inch diameter circle here uh, to give me the kind of these rounded edges. And then it's offset outward just a quarter of an inch. I want a quarter of an inch lip. Okay. So that's how this general shape was made. Now from this shape, I can make the bottom of my box. So I'm going to select both of these. And this is, I don't care what shape this is. We're going to be doing one that's a heart shape here in a moment and a rectangular shape and a circular shape, but I don't care what shape it is. These steps all apply to all the shapes. So we're going to start with this and then we'll move on to the other shapes. And, uh, but the steps are going to all apply. So it's, it's rinse and repeat when you're doing fitted lid boxes. Okay. And of course you can mix and you can match them up, mix them up, mash them up, however you want to do all that kind of stuff. But we're going to talk about it. All right. So let's take this. I've got this selected. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm just going to drag over a copy. Okay. Now I've got a copy. So one is going to be the lid of my box and the other is going to be the bottom. Now on the bottom of the box, I want to divide this box up with a little bit of a divider that you saw in the earlier diagram. And here's the approach that I took to that. So I'm going to take a straight line and I'm going to just pick a spot, any spot, anywhere that I think would look good. And I'm going to go, uh, first of all, I want to rotate this box. I'm going to hit the number nine on my keyboard to rotate it uh, counterclockwise. One, two, three, four times. So that way I can put them kind of close together uh, to minimize the waste on my board. Okay. All right. So anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to take a straight line and I'm going to take that line and I'm going to just click somewhere up here. And then I'm going to pick a spot down here, depending on how big I want the bottom cavity to be. I'm going to pick a spot there and then space bar to finish. Okay. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to click on that line and I'm going to go into node editing mode. And I'm going to turn this line into a Bezier curve. And on this Bezier curve, now I'm going to shape my pockets, you know, my two separate decided pockets and everything, what shape I want them to be. And so I think I'm going to kind of bring this, drag this over here and drag that there because this is the bottom of my box, right? This is the top area. This is the bottom area. So let's go ahead and let's drag that out. I want a nice curve. Okay, so now I want this curve. I got to create a wall, right? A wall here between the two pockets and everything. So I'm going to just take this line and I'm going to hit the control key, hold it down and hit the letter C for copy. And then hold the control key down and hit the letter V for paste. Now I could absolutely have done that by right clicking and choose copy and then paste. Or I could have just held down my control key and drug a copy off either way, right? There's, there's a couple ways to get to it, but I have a copy here and now I'm going to move this copy. Just, I'm kind of eyeballing it to however thick I want my line to be, you know, my wall, not my line, but however thick I want my line to be. And I'd like it to have a little bit of thickness. I'd like a little bit, a nice, cool little divider in here. And so now you can see that I moved down that my line doesn't quite reach uh, the walls. So I'm going to use the extend tool. The extend tool is the second icon, third row of the create vectors menu or edit objects menu. Sorry. And that will allow me to click here and then click on this line here to extend that vector over to there. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to click here and then here to extend the line over there. All right. Now, so I've got this line extended and I've got my wall created. Well, imagine if you will, my router bit coming in here and cutting. It's, I've got a sharp point right here. I've definitely got a sharp point right here that it's not going to be able to get into. 
I've got one here and I've got one right here in this corner. Well, I want to make it to where my router bit is going to be able to pocket this out. And, you know, my drawing looks like what I'm going to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inside shape here, this and this. And what I generally usually do is so I can keep my original vectors intact. What I usually do is I usually copy these to another layer. Okay. Uh, a new layer, uh, another layer, something. So I have something to work with or you don't have to do that. doesn't matter whichever one you want to do, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to copy to layer, new layer. And I'm just going to call this my triangle box trimmed vectors. Just, it, you don't have to be so darn long with the names and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just doing it so I have something to uh, work with. And I'm going to change the color on this to kind of a, uh, like a red, something bright. Okay. Now, if I come in here and turn off my triangle box layer, I've, I've got my trimmed layer here that I'm going to activate and make that bold. And all I'm going to do is grab my interactive trim tool. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to clip this line here. And that line there, that's going to divide my two pockets or separate my two pockets. And then I'm going to come in here with my fillet tool, first icon on the third row of the edit objects menu. And I'm using a quarter inch bit. So my radius is going to be an eighth of an inch. And I'm simply going to come over here to these corner points and round them off very simply. That's it. I'm done. Okay. That's all I needed to do. Now I can come over here and uh, turn my box back on. And you're going to see the red layer on top of the black layer, my original, my original black lines versus my red lines, right? My red lines are going to be on pocket area. Now, what I can very simply do here, since these are going to be my vectors that I'm going to be pocketing, I can go ahead and just delete my bottom vectors that were down here. I can go ahead and get rid of them. Don't need them. You know, that way I just have my inside pocket there. So that gives me my inside pocket. Now my route, this is all going to be solid wood all the way around the outer edge and uh, my two pockets in there for this triangle. Okay. You know, and James uh, Stewart, we're going to jump in. James Stewart asked, you know, says a very, you know, good thing. He, he asked the question, why not do an offset? And uh, I could, James, but what I want, I don't want to offset the vector in even more and make my pocket smaller than it has to be. I want my quarter inch lip here, and then I want my pocket to start on the inside of that lip. You know, I don't want to offset that even further in, well, even if it's a small fraction, and work off that. I just want to work off my inside vector and turn it into these two separate pockets. That's all. All right. So, but great question. Hopefully that answered it, but you could absolutely do an offset if you wanted to. No problem with that whatsoever. You know? All right. So now with this, so imagine my pockets are going to get cut and imagine this is going to be the wall here. Well, I need another set of vectors. I need the lip. I need the lip that is, you know, going to, um, that this rim is going to fit into. And in this case, I forgot to do the offset before I did that because this should be the lip here, not the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing, this whole thing, and I'm going to offset it inward by a quarter of an inch because I'm an idiot and didn't do that in the beginning. 0.25. Hold on. Not that way. Not that way, you goofball. All right, let's back up, Jack. Let's back up. Let me do this the right way. Let me offset this inward. There we go. Let me do, let me take these vectors here. 
and let me move them over to my trim layer because I'm a goofball and let me redo that real quick boom 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 and let me get my fillet tool I'm just redoing everything that I just did because I did not offset it in earlier and there's that now I got this guy here this guy is not technically a uh, line, you know, but if I zoom in quite enough, quick enough or further enough to the point, then it'll offset it for me. All right. Now, once again, let's get back to where we were before I was talking smack. OK, so I've got my two pockets. I've got my wall, which is going to be the wood between here and here. And then I've got my area that's going to be pocketed down for the lip, for the rim of the lid to fit into. Now. When I run my bit to do my pocket cut to cut out this area here, I want that bit to travel over the edge of this profile line during that pocket. So I'm going to offset this profile line outward by a 32nd. Now, as far as how far you offset it outward, that's up to you. All I need to do is go a 32nd because that's going to give me the two vectors to pocket between. OK, now let's go ahead and let's go over and let's create a tool path and uh, get things done. Now, my inside pockets of my box here, they're going to be a half inch deep. My box. Now, your box could be however thick you want it to be. Generally, when I'm doing gift boxes, I will make small gift boxes out of three quarter inch material. Or I'll make deeper gift boxes, such as a box similar to that olive wood box that I showed you earlier to where the material would be about an inch and a half thick material, you know, an inch and a quarter or more, basically, you know, it depends on how deep you want your box. In my case, I'm working with three quarter inch material here. So my pockets uh, for my box, they're going to be a half inch deep with my quarter inch in mill. Okay. So that's going to be those two pockets there. I'm going to calculate that. All right. Let's reset that out and preview that toolpath. Oh, James. Uh, so James uh, corrected me. He wasn't talking about offset on the box. He was uh, um, talking about when I offset the busy curve, I could have absolutely done an offset as well too. And you could too as well, James. Yes. You could offset that outward a certain distance and then extend the lines with the extend tool either way you're either way that, that's just uh, uh i just copy and paste so either way it would work for sure all right so there's my two inside pockets there uh for this simple box and then <clears throat> now i've got this box uh or this vector here and this red vector out here and the inside of this lid are all going to be milled down to three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to do a pocket cut three eighths of an inch down and you can, your the depth of your lip, however much you want it to be, that's up to you. I just do three eighths of an inch. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and with the quarter inch in mill, we're going to calculate that out. And let's move this over here and not that far. And let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. What that's going to do is that's going to pocket the inside of my lid here. And sorry, it's a little slow on the preview because I have my... Uh, I have my uh, quality turned up so high. I'll turn it down on the next preview so we're not sitting there watching previews and stuff. All right. So now I've got a lip around here that the this is going to slide over. It's going to slide over that lip there. And the final step on this box, if I was uh, you know wasn't decorating it anyway would be to do the two profile cuts. So this line here and this inside line here 
would be the profile cuts. And these profile cuts will be cutting all the way through the material. In my case, three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to go ahead and edit this uh, and change this to an eighth of an inch per pass. I don't need to do a 16th. Um, and I'm going to calculate this. Now, of course, I might want to add tabs unless I'm using double side tape or hot glue or something like that. I might want to add some tabs in here. So let's go ahead and add a couple of tabs. And on here, you can see I've got uh, three tabs on this. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Notice these two tabs here are kind of side to side each other. That way, um, that'll reinforce this area right here, uh, depending on how much thin area is going to be between these two. So we've got some tabs in there. And we'll go ahead and calculate that. And we'll preview that cut. So very simple triangle fitted lid box. Nothing to it. Uh, we did not do any V carving on the inside of the lid or what have you. If we were going to do any V carving on the inside of the lid, then um, we would do that before the profile cut, of course. And we are going to do that. I'm going to create that tool path for you so you can see what you're doing there. But see how these two tabs are kind of right across from each other. So it reinforces this area. So it gives me a nice reinforced area to hold those two parts in. All right. Let's back up and let's say that we wanted to um, go ahead and throw some text in here. Uh, whatever it might be, you know, uh, in this case, uh, we'll just do, um, right. We're going to propose to somebody with this box. And, uh, if it's got two pockets in there like that, then there better be two rings or else make it one pocket. Uh, and let's, uh, did I spell Mary right? Merry Christmas is M-E-R-R-Y. Mary, like Mary me, is M-A-R-R-Y. Correct? Am I correct? I'm correct. I think I'm correct. All right. So with that, now notice I have some overlapping letters. One of the benefits of version 10 is that I can just simply hit my weld tool and it'll ask if I want to keep the original vectors and just create new ones or if I want to replace them. If I replace them, it just replaces them with the welded vectors. If you do not have version 10, since someone asked me if I'm in version 10, if you do not have version 10, you would simply convert that text to curves and you could weld it at that point. Or you could use your interactive trim tool with your scissors and just come in here and trim away the overlap. However you want to do it. There's a couple of ways to do that. But you would have to uh, convert it to curves first if you don't have version 10. Version 10, you do not have to convert it to curves. You can just simply weld the text and it will weld it for you. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create a V-carve toolpath on this. Now, the thing about this V-carve toolpath is that my pocket has already been pocketed out three eighths of an inch deep. So I need to start at three eighths of an inch. In my case, I'm going to use a 90 degree half inch V-bit and I'm simply going to come down here and hit calculate. Okay. That way it carves. Let's get in there. That way it carves in that pocket area down in the bottom of that pocket. Okay. All right. So however you want to customize it, that's it. So does everybody have the basics of a box? That. And we're going to move on to other shapes and just show you the same thing. So you kind of got, you got the concept of that a little bit, right? Very simple fitted lid box. Uh, now here's the kicker. If you got the concept, there's one thing missing that, that, that was not done that we got to, we got to do the pocket cut on the lid. I didn't give myself an allowance because I ran this lip pocket and this pocket together in the same tool path. And if I would have given myself an allowance, it would have done both of them. And now I would have had a sloppy lid. So I need to correct my tool pass. I was wrong. So we're going to go back and we got to make a quick correction. We're going to go back into our pocket tool path here. And I'm going to turn off this vector. I'm going to hold down my shift key and turn off this vector. And I'm simply going to calculate this tool path again, just for this lip here, because I'm going to create a second pocket tool path just for the inside of the lid 
But on this one, I'm going to give myself an allowance. A 5,000 of an inch allowance. And what that's going to do is when I calculate this toolpath, if I can get down to the calculate button, when I calculate this toolpath, if we come over here and if I go into solid view, all right, and of course, my 5,000 of an inch allowance should be a negative number, always a negative when you're going over the line, Laney. I haven't been away that long that I would forget that. So it's got to be a negative allowance. So that way it overcuts the cut by that 10, you know, that five thousandths of an inch so that it will slip over this lip right here. So it'll fit in this area. So it can be a nice, nice friction fit. Okay. So I usually do that five thousandths of an inch cut on the lid. I very rarely never if that makes sense, do it on the lip of the bottom of the box. I never do the 5,000th allowance there. I always do it on the inside of the lid because I've got, you know, I can take and with the lid, I can go ahead and I'm not doing a 5,000th of allowance in both directions and all that stuff. It's just doing towards the over the line here. You know, so I'm not wasting extra time. It's, it's not much extra time, but anyway, uh, I always do it on the lid. So we got a five thousandths, a negative, negative five thousandths of an inch allowance right here. Now, if you're looking at your Vetric software and you're not seeing where to put the allowance in, you're in the pocket toolpath, but you're not seeing where to put the allowance in, that's because you don't have the show advanced toolpath options checked. You would simply check that box and it'll open those options up. And this is where you would put in your allowance. Okay. And the pocket allowance and everything. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So we have the concept of a box. Very simple concept, right? Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and let's change this up a bit. Let's go back into our drawing here. Let's come back in and turn off our layers. And let's uh, turn off our tool pass. Let's go up in here and let's talk about layer two. We've got two different shape boxes here. And uh, Dan asked a very important question says, uh, are you going to show us how to uh, do something on the top or is that in the next class? No, Dan, I wouldn't disappoint you like that. Of course, I'm going to show you how to do something on top. That's going to be set up as a two-sided project. We're going to do that in just a minute once we get the basics down. Good question. All right. So Jeff has a question here. Uh, let's see what Jeff's question is. Uh, let's say the tail of the Y was not wide enough that it did not show up when V carved. Could you do it to make it V carved? All right, let's go back to that. Let's go back uh, to that and into here. Let's turn on our box. Okay. Now, if I'm reading the question correct, Jeff, you're saying if the Y, if the tail of the Y was not wide enough that when it was carved, it doesn't show up, like it wasn't carved deep enough to get any definition, could we carve it so that it would show up? Let me know if that is correct, Jeff. Yes or no. Is that your question? If this, for some reason, if any part of my design, my carving was so shallow that it didn't show up, can we do something to make it show up? Can we carve it a little deeper or whatever? Let me know, uh, Jeff, if that is your question, if that was your question and I understood it correctly. <clears throat> and uh, just in case I did understand it correctly, I'm going to go ahead and answer that. So in that V-carve toolpath, um, what I can do is I can give myself a little bit more of a start depth. If my 
design, if I'm using a script letter that is so fine that any part of my design, my V carving is faint in the wood, you know, not showing up very well or anything like that. One, I can definitely give myself a little bit more of a start depth. So instead of starting at 0.375, I may give it an additional 10 or 20 thousandths of an inch, which would mean my start depth would change to, let's say I go 20 thousandths, my start depth would change to 0.395. Okay. And so in that case, if I were to calculate this out, what that's going to do for me is when it carves and let me carve all the other stuff first or this is going to look really funky uh let me go into this pocket cut right here and let's move this down in the list let's preview the visible tool pass once again oh hold on before we do that let's turn that off and let me let me turn my view quality down uh, so it's a little faster. <clears throat> so I've given myself an additional 20 thousandths of an inch. Now I'm going to go back into that V carve and take that 20 thousandths out. I'm going to, I'll, I'll, as a matter of fact, let me stop that. Let me go in here. Let me take that 20 thousandths out and do the V carve 0.375. And let me uh, carve these uh, tool pass again. This is without the 20 thousandths of an inch uh, additional start depth. And my 0.375 is the start depth for the simple fact because that's my lid. You know, I'm popping it down. All right. So let's say that, you know, my carving... Uh, my Y or some part, my E or something, it didn't show up very well. Well, I would give myself that additional start depth. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 395. I'm going to recalculate this. And when we preview that toolpath, you will see that we'll get much more definition in that, in that cut. And I want to be careful. 20 thousandths of an inch was a little much. I mean, small numbers, the deeper you go, the wider that V-bit gets, right? Now, that's alternative number one, okay? Uh, adding start depth. Alternative number two, use a narrower V-bit. So let me give you an example of that. Let's go into the V-carve cut. And let's change the wide 90-degree V-bit into a 60 degree V bit. With no additional start depth, which our 0.375, the bottom of our pocket. By changing the angle of that V bit, now that 60 is gonna wanna cut through, right? The angle was, I narrowed it up a little bit too much. It's gonna wanna cut through uh, in, in my lid and I don't want that. So that's gonna require me to do a, a uh, a flat depth, um, or I could go from an, you know, um, I could find a different angle or whatever, but in my case, I need to hit cancel here and I need to give myself a flat depth so it doesn't cut all the way through. And, um, I'm starting here, going to here from that start point down a quarter of an inch. I'm flattening it out at a quarter of an inch. So if I calculate this, if I reset that preview, and let's just preview the two pockets, the V-carve and this pocket here. Now I'm using a 60 degree V bit, which is not the 90 and that narrower angle is going to give me more depth of cut. You know, if I'm working with really fine text, I might even have to go down to a 22 degree V bit or something. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get in there with that 60. Now 
That 60 is starting at three eighths of an inch and it's cutting down a quarter of an inch and it's going to flatten itself out at a quarter of an inch. So that's the little flat areas you see down there at the bottom and everything. But that gives me much more depth of cut with that narrower bit that, you know, I'm getting all the definition out of that letter that it's going to get, you know? So if your letters are cutting shallow uh, to where you're not getting a, you know, you can't, some of the letters are missing or whatever, because it's just so narrow and shallow and all, you can either give yourself an additional start depth or you can work with a narrower bit, 22 degree, 60 degree, whatever the case may be. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Hopefully that answers your question. Now, Dan asked the same question. Dan, it's basically, yeah. So Dan asked the question, hey, instead of doing a flat depth, could you just start a little higher, you know? And that way, you know, when it gets down to the three-eighths of an inch, it, it cuts and gives you definition, but it doesn't, you don't have to set the flat depth. And that's what I got, Dan, from that little question, could you start a little higher? Yes, you could. How much higher, you know, that's, you know, a few. So what Dan's saying is, is in the V carve, if I'm going to use my 60 degree V bit, you know, instead of using a flat depth, can I just start a little higher? That means it's going to carve in the air until it gets, you know, to the depth that, you know, uh, it carves to. So yeah, I could, I could say, you know, uh, three, four, five instead of three, seven, five. And I could calculate now I'm, it's still wanting to cut through uh, by nine thousandths of an inch. So let's go up here and change that. Let's make that uh, 330. And now no warning. And if I come in here and uh, preview those two tool paths, my pocket's still cutting to three eighths of an inch. There's nothing changing there, but my V bit is actually going to be carving in starting in the air at 330 instead of 375. It's going to go 0.330 and it's going to cut down with my 60 degree V bit. And I still get, you know, my carving. So to answer that question, yes, you could. Either way. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right. So we got the basics down. Everybody kind of got a concept of uh, the box and the simple vectors. Well, let's go ahead and let's turn these vectors off here and let's go up to our second option here. And I'm not going to draw or create tool pass on this or anything. I'm just going to show you the same thing. Okay. The one with now, again, we're looking at the inside of the lid, the inside of the lid. Now, when I'm doing this is a pin box, this box is wide enough that and let me give you the dimensions of this box so the outside final cut of this box the size of this box is seven and a half inches in length by two and a quarter inches wide this is a simple pin and pin gift set box could be a tennis bracelet jewelry box whatever you want it to be but a very simple it's seven and a half inches in length two and a quarter inches wide okay now once again offset inward a quarter of an inch Offset inward a quarter of an inch. Okay. That's going to give me an inside dimension of six and a half inches by one and a quarter inches. That is plenty wide enough for my pen set, my pen and pencil set, or whatever the case may be. It's plenty long enough because this pin here is only five and a half inches. So I got a whole inch to play with in there. And, um, so I got a nice little pin and pin gift set box, or it could be a tennis bracelet. It could be whatever, right? Whatever you want in the box. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go back over here. So I've got my outside profile, not that one, outside profile, seven and a half by two and a quarter, offset in a quarter of an inch, offset in another quarter of an inch. That gives me the inside pocket that's going to get cut. The wall the wooden wall area is going to be this area here that's going to be my wall and then the area between this and this is going to be milled down for the recess that the lid slides over this is the pocket of the inside of the lid 
And on this one, I simply got congratulations, get speed carved in there. It's like a little gift box for somebody that might've gotten promoted or whatever the case may be. Now, again, this is the inside of the box. We haven't talked about the outside. Uh, Dan saying, hey, you're going to show us how to do something on the top of the box and things like that. But we have our box perimeter. Okay. Seven and a half by two and a quarter. Offset inward a quarter of an inch. And we've got a, uh, that's our pocket for our lid that we're going to mill down three eighths of an inch. And then in the bottom of that, we're going to carve something or nothing. It doesn't matter right? That's the lid. Always. Doesn't matter. Just the same thing as this lid. Outside perimeter, offset in a quarter of an inch. Pocket area that's going to get something carved in it. That's the lid. Same thing. Doesn't matter what shape it is. The box. You've got your outside. Oops, I keep clicking that one. Outside perimeter, offset in a quarter of an inch, offset in another quarter of an inch. Gives you your inside pocket. The wall is between these two. That's that wooden area right there. Okay. And then this vector that's on the outside that's offset out here a 32nd of an inch further than the profile. That is simply so I can do my pocket cut between these two vectors. And my bit runs over that edge and gives me a nice, clean, flat edge for my box to sit down and slide down on comfortably. So it's a nice, tight closing lid. Right. When you're creating your tool pass, the inside pocket of the lid, you give yourself a negative allowance. Give yourself a small amount. Depending on your CNC, that allowance may vary, but start out small. You can always sneak up on it. Okay. So I usually negative 0 0.005 is my allowance. And with that, I generally don't have to go any more than that. There's times for some reason or another, I might need to go a little bit more, but I sneak up on it. 0 0.006, 0 0.007, you know, 0 0.008, 0 0.009, 0 0.01, right? You know, sneak up on it, whatever you need, you know, but don't make it too sloppy, okay? You want a nice friction fit, okay? That's the, and then, of course, this box, again, has its perimeter, or no, that's the pocket line, sorry. It's perimeter, offset in a quarter of an inch, offset in a quarter of an inch, and then, of course, the two pockets here are separated out you know, to create a nice design. Same concept, different shapes than that triangular shape. Same long story short for a fitted lid box. It doesn't change. Now, of course, you can change it up. You might not want your lip to be a quarter of an inch. You might want it to be narrower. You might want it to be thicker, right? You might want it to be a nice rigid lip because you're worried that that quarter of an inch might break, you know, from taking it on and off, which I've never knock on wood. I've never had one break, but my, my distance is a quarter of an inch. OK, so you can change it up any way you want. So all that being said, rinse and repeat, doesn't matter what the shape it is. So let's come in here and let's turn off everything. All right, let's turn off everything. Everything is everything. And let's come in here and let's go into layer one. And I've got a very simple heart now. After I create this heart box, we're going to do one final box with both sides, the lid decorated carved, nice decorated carved, the top, the actual top. We're going to, we're going to create a two-sided project. We're going to do some outside decorations. We're going to round over the edges to get a nice soft round over. And we're going to do some decorative carving on the top of the box to give it some oomph, some, some pizzazz. Okay. But first I want to create one more simple fitted box from scratch. So I got a simple vector here. Notice on this heart vector shape that I drew that I've already got the radiuses here at the top and the bottom, no sharp points and everything. Because when my router bit, I'm using a quarter inch bit to cut this. You can use whatever size bit you want, by the way, but I'm using a quarter inch bit to do everything. So I want that quarter inch bit to be able to fit in here and everything. So I've got a nice simple vector. All right. So we're going to come in here. And I'm going to offset inward on this a quarter of an inch. And I'm just beating this home, guys. Sorry, I'm repeating myself with different shapes and all, but I'm beating this home um, just so because it's the same steps no matter the shape. All right? You can then get creative. You can, you can start making some really cool creative things. 
Now, of course, you can do bigger boxes like big heart candy boxes for Valentine's Day or whatever. Your walls are going to get thicker as you go bigger, right? This is These are simple small boxes. Just so you know, this heart shape is uh, about five and seven eighths tall by about six and seven eighths wide, roughly. Okay, so it's a good size heart, you know, five by seven. It's not bad. It's a nice size little heart. All right, so we're going to offset that vector inward quarter of an inch. Okay, first of all, don't do what I just did. Make sure that when you are drawing, make sure you are on the active layer that you're drawing in. So in my case, layer one. All right, let's do that one more time. There we go. All right. Roxanne. Roxanne. Okay, so now we've got this lid. This is going to be my lip and everything here. This is going to be the pocket that's going to be fitting around the base. So now that I've got that drawn, I'm going to go ahead and select both of those, hold down my control key, double click on it to put it in transform mode, hold down my control key, and I'm simply going to drag the bottom off now. This is going to be the same vectors for the bottom, except for one thing I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this vector and offset it inward another quarter of an inch. You can offset it inward a quarter of an inch, whatever size you want to offset. It doesn't matter. I just I want I, I do a quarter of an inch because I want a quarter inch wall here, a nice a nice thick wall between where this gets pocketed out and where the lip of the lid goes. Like just a quarter of an inch is all I need. You can go bigger, smaller, what have you. Now on this box, I want to divide it up. Okay, so we're going to divide it up. I'm going to use a line tool. And uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go right, not quite straight down, not like that. Space bar to finish that line. And then I'm going to go into node editing on that line, node editing. And turn that into a Vizier curve. Let's go ahead and pull this up a bit. Just whatever appeals to the eye. I'm going to have two sections here. Now, uh, earlier, um, Dan, uh, I think it was Dan that questioned me on that. Uh, James, no, it was actually James. James said, uh, hey, can you just, why do copy and paste? Can you just do an offset, offset inward or outward or what have you? Yeah, so let's do it this time. Uh, we're going to take the offset and let's say that I want my wall here to be a quarter of an inch. So I'll offset. It doesn't matter inward or outward, whichever way you want to go. I'm going to go not inward. I want to go the other direction. So in my case, it'll be outward. Okay. And so I've got that offset outward. And now I just need to extend this line down. So I'm going to come over here with my extend tool. I'm going to click on this line and this line and extend it down. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and trim away that overlap. All right, so I got a nice little dividing line there. Now, and uh, earlier, you saw me take my original vectors and copy them to a layer, right? A trimmed layer that I called it, and um, and do all the trimming and stuff there. Once again, a lot of ways to do things. You do not have to do that. All you have to do really is come in here and start trim. You're going to trim that line away and that line away, right? Then you're going to come in to your fillet tool, eighth inch radius because I'm using a quarter inch bit, and you're going to come in and you're going to click here. You're going to click on this point there, give it a nice little radius. You're going to come around. Click there and click here. And I've also got one right there. So I'm going to round that off as well, too. Okay. So there's my two little pockets for the heart. I didn't have to, I, I didn't have to copy those to another layer. The only reason I did that is so it would keep my original layers intact in case I didn't like the way that I trimmed this or I didn't like the line that I drew or I wanted to change the curve a little bit because I didn't like the way it looked, whatever the case may be, that's why I copy those vectors to another layer and do the trimming over there. Cause when I come back and I bring them in, 
I could say, yeah, I want this to be a little curvier. I want this line to be a little straighter. I want it up here. And I've still got my original vectors there that I can simply redo, right? That's why I copied to a layer. But in this case, I didn't because I wanted to show you you don't have to, right? Right. Okay. Now, so I've got my layers here. Got my pockets that are going to get cut out for the little candies or whatever the heck's going to go in this heart. I got my profile cut here. I need to offset outward a 32nd. That's just my magic number. All I'm doing is offsetting it outward a little bit so that my router bit will cut over that edge. Just a small amount. Okay. These are all the vectors I need. I'm going to go ahead and add some text in here. We'll throw some text in here because... Why not? Now, if you're curious as to what font I'm using, this particular font is from dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com, dafont.com. It is called the Blenda Script Font, B-L-E-N-D-A Script, Blenda Script Font. It's one of my favorite script fonts to use. I just like the way it looks, uh, but it's called blend script and you can download it for free off of dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. All right. I've got my text here. I'm going to break this up into individual lines a bit because I want to mix and match it up a little bit. I'm going to take the I over here and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to take love, drop it right about here and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to take the U and I'm going to hold down my shift key on this one and just stretch it out a little bit. Okay. Let's move that up some right about there. Okay. Just want to be different. All right. Okay. So if I was creating the tool paths on this, my first tool path would probably be my V card tool path. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It would not be my V-Carb toolpath. Don't you lie, Laney. Uh, my first toolpath is going to be my pocket cut for the inside of the bowl here, uh, the bottom. Pocket cut. I usually cut it about a half inch deep. Um, if this was thicker material, then, of course, that cut would be deeper, right, depending on how deep you want the cavity to be. Using my quarter inch end mill, calculate it out. Reset the preview. And we're not going to preview it. We'll preview them all at one time. All right. Once that one's done, I'm going to come in here and uh, grab this vector here and this far outside vector. That's going to be another pocket cut. This one's going to be three-eighths of an inch deep. That's how deep I want my lips. Your lips can be shallower if you want to. Either one. I'm going to calculate that. Okay. We'll preview it in a minute. Now I'm going to come in here and create my pocket cut for this. This pocket cut is going to be also three eighths of an inch deep. So it fits over that lip and they cl close nicely. Uh, if you wanted to go a little bit deeper so it, uh, it doesn't bottom out on the top of this wall, you can absolutely do that. Like if you, if you're like, you know, the last box I did, uh, it kind of there, I could see a little crack, you know, when the, the lid didn't quite go down, it didn't quite go down and sit, you know, closed real tight. There was a little bit of gap I could see, and I don't want the gap there. Make this just a little bit deeper, make it 0.38 or something instead of 375, however you want to do. Uh, on this one, I do want to give myself a small allowance, negative 0.005. Calculate it out. All right. Last but not least, my I love you. My little message to my sweetheart. We're going to go V-car toolpath. No, we're not. We're going to stop and hold the horses for a minute. I got an overlap in my text and everything, so I need to weld that together real quick. Once again, version 10, you can just click the weld button, replace, and it'll weld it. Versions earlier than version 10. You're going to click your trans convert your objects tool first. It'll convert it to objects and then you can weld it. Okay. All right. So now 
Now I'm going to go ahead and do my V-carve. All right, I'm a V-carve. I'm starting at 0.375. For me, I don't want it to cut that deep and everything. And they're nice, good-sized letters and all, so I'm going to use my 90-degree half-inch V-bit. And I'm going to go ahead and come down here and hit calculate. All right. Now, even at that, even at that, because of the size of the letters and all, even with the 90 degree V bit. Oh, I was about to say, wait a minute now. 0.375, not 0.75. I was wondering why I was cutting through it. Never did before, but that's okay. Calculate. There we go. Sorry, I was about to say, even though I was like, I got a foot of flat depth because it's wanting to cut through, but it wasn't. I just didn't have the right start depth in there. Okay, so look how funky that would look if I ran that V-carve toolpath first. Oh, my goodness, don't do that, right? You know, you got to run that pocket cut first. Okay, so last and final toolpath is the profile cuts. Profile cuts. Now, on the profile cut, cutting three quarters of an inch deep on the outside of the line. You definitely want to add tabs to help hold that part in. I'm not going to add tabs because I want to be able to show this part in its entirety finished, you know, all the edges and everything. So let's go ahead and uh, preview. Let's get down here. Let's preview all the tool paths, all the relevant tool paths for this project. Preview all the visible tool paths. All right, Robert had a good question, and we're going to come to that question as soon as this preview is done, Robert. Uh, and I'll pop, I'll share that question with the group. Okay, let's get rid of our waste material. We've got a nice, and of course, this is a small box, right? It's only three quarter inch thick material. You want a little bit deeper box to be able to hold something a little bit more, uh, you know, go with thicker material and all that stuff. You know, I'm just using three quarter inch material. Uh, my pen boxes are made out of three quarter inch material all day long. Um, and uh, you can cut quite a few of those pen boxes out of one, you know, stick of wood. Uh, but anyway, we got a nice lip and all for the lid to fit over. Uh, Going to have a nice little friction fit. And uh, there you go. So very simple fitted lid boxes in different shapes, okay? And uh, I'll be happy to share these files with the, uh, in the, uh, there'll be a digital download for these files you guys can play with and stuff for this file and everything. But let's talk about dressing up the outside of the box, the top of the lid, you know, uh, doing some decorative carving in it and maybe rounding over the edges and stuff, breaking the edges and all. Let's talk about that. That's a two-sided project. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a <clears throat> another instance of my Vetric. And while that opens, before that opens, or while that opens, I'm going to minimize that for a moment. And I'm going to go to Robert's question. Now, Robert's question, uh, uh, a little bit lengthy, it says, on your pen or pencil box, if you wanted to create flutes for the pen and pencil so they don't just roll around in the bottom of this pocket, would you pocket out the inside first or the flutes first to leave the flutes proud? Okay, so let's go back to that layer. Let's come back into that layer. And um, what Robert's uh, question is, is, if I didn't want to just throw my pen and pencil inside this cavity and I wanted to create flutes uh, for it and all for the pen and pencil to fall into, would I pocket out the pocket first and then, uh, you know, uh, do the flutes or to leave the flutes proud and all that stuff? Well, how I would do that is I would actually, I'd have my wall vector here. This is kind of the outline of my, um, uh, where that pocket's going to be, uh, Robert. And what I would generally do is I would create the two 
vectors for my pins. And let me make them the right size. My box, uh, my pin, I'm going to make it uh, so they fit in there. My pin is exactly six and a half inches length. So, um, or I'm sorry, five and a half inches in length. So I'm going to give it uh, six inches fine on that. And the height, uh, what is my thickness of my pin here? This particular pin, uh, half inch comfortably. So let's go 0.5. Okay. Let me turn off. I got another layer on here. Let me turn off that layer. There we go. All right. So one more time. Let's go uh, six by. Technically, I don't need to go uh, 0.5. Um, let's go 0.375. Let's put a point in front of there. That's going to be a big old box. And, um, actually, God, I'm an idiot. Let's do it a different way. I'm just going to draw a straight line, uh, line from here to here. I want it to be six inches in length. And let's hold down the control key, put a line here. Now, let's get these centered up inside of that. So I select those two first, the rectangle last, and I'm going to center them up and down. Try that a different way. Group that together. Select that. And I'm going to center them up and down. There we go. And left to right. Okay. Now, I'm going to use, in this case, if I was doing a, a nice little, I want a nice little rounded flute uh, for the pin and all to sit into, I would most likely use a box core bit. Robert, I'd use a box core bit. Um. Mike Smith, uh, the files would be, they're going to be in the description of the video. So they'll be available for anybody that wants to download them. Uh, I'm going to use a box core bit and that box core bit is going to have a three eighths inch diameter. Um, I could either go three eighths or half inch, either one. I might do half inch, half inch diameter, uh, you know, bit. Now, one of the things I got to be careful of is that when that bit comes down to cut this flute, I don't want it cutting way out here, right? I want the edge, outside edge of the bit to kind of create a nice little rounded edge here. So my lines need to be shorter, right? So if I if I took this bit here or this uh, thing here and, you know, I say I want my pen cavity to start there, and let me make a copy of this on the other end so you can see kind of where I'm heading with this. Let's say I want it to end there. Then my line, the length of my line is going to, you know, be at the center of that bit. So that'll be my start and end point and everything. Right. So let's get rid of that and let's get rid of that. And so what I would do in this case is I do want this to pocket down a little bit. So let me create this box for you. Uh, first thing would be my pocket cut. And this pocket cut, instead of three eighths of an inch down, um, I'm going to have it create a little bit of a lip. I'm going to go uh, point two, point two. And uh, let's go 0 0.25, 0 0.25. We'll calculate that out. Let's reset that back. Uh, on my outside lip here, here and here, we'll go ahead and I'll just do this whole outside of this box here. Um, it's going to be a pocket cut three eighths of an inch deep. Um, I 
Let me come back in and change the other this other pocket. In this pocket, I am going to go three eighths. Let's see here. I'm going to go point three. Point three on that one. That's the inside pocket. I'm changing it. Just want to go a little bit deeper on that. Okay. So with those two tool paths, uh, let's go ahead and create a profile cut uh, to cut it out type of thing. I'm doing the flutes last, if you notice. Um, three quarters of an inch. Calculate that. All right. Let's preview those visible tool paths right there. Just so we can see the bottom of this box. Okay. And um, all right. So we've got this box and basically we've got this box pocketed out a small amount, not the half inch deep that we did because we're going to have two rounded cavities for our pen and pencil to lay into. This is how I would do it. Of course, you would change it up a little bit for yourself, uh, Robert. Um, but uh, I'm going to take and do a profile cut or you can do a fluted tool path, but I'm going to, in this, my case, I'm going to do a profile cut. Uh, and um, it's going to be starting at that 0.3 inches, which is what I carved that cavity to cutting down, cutting down an additional 0.25. And I'm going to use my half inch box core bit, uh, which let me see here. Half inch radius core box bit, core box bit, should I say? Calculate. I'm going to be on the line core box bit. And we're going to calculate that out. And I'm going to preview that cut. Oh, I need my three, that half inch. I knew that was going to do that. Hold on a second. That half inch was, I knew that was going to be, I knew that was going to be trash. Um, let me use my three eighths inch box core bit. That half inch was way too big. Uh, where's my three eighths inch box core bit? Okay, let's calculate that. Okay, with that preview reset, let's redo those. Let's re-preview those. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Preview the visible tool pass. I think pocket nine was part of it. We're about to find out. Uh, uh, I don't like the way that looks either. Let's try. That looks like trash. What's uh, let's try a quarter inch box core bit. Quarter inch box core bit. Now, in that case, I don't have a quarter inch box core bit. So I got to draw one. So take a quick minute. I got to draw one, cut the vector there, cut the vector there, delete that, select that, go into my tool database, add a new tool, I'm going to put it under my form tools, add a new tool, a new form tool. And uh, pass depth is going to be a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, all that's good. Click OK. All right, let's try that one more time. This time with the quarter inch box core bit. Oops. 
Did I not name the damn thing? Did I not name the damn thing? Excuse my language. Hold on a second. Select my profile. Tool database. Form tools. New. Form tool. All that's fine, but I need to come up to the name. And this is going to be my 0.25 radius box for bit. Get rid of all that. Put a space right there. Click OK apply and okay all right there junior all right let's go back into that tool path and let's choose our quarter inch radius box core bit calculate i probably don't like the i probably won't like the depth of cut either but that's fine we'll see what it looks like all we're doing is creating some little curved areas for the pen and pencil to lay in. Um, and that's it. So let's see here. I will tell you this on my pen and pencil sets. They do not have these coves or pockets in them. They just have that pocket. It's lined with felt on the inside and they lay. All right. So we can't have this because that's, too narrow the pen and pencil will not fit in there okay it will not fit in there it's too deep of a cut so all we're trying to do is get just get two little recesses here so they won't roll around again i line the inside of my boxes with felt so i would never do this but just to show that it can be done uh the cut depth needs to only be maybe a sixteenth of an inch Calculate, reset the preview one more time on this, and then we got to move on. We can't get stuck on this. You get the concept. Preview visible toolpath. Okay, still not liking the shit on that. Um, let me do this. Let me ungroup this. I'm going to space this. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to bump that up two bumps. Hold down my control key, bump that down two bumps. I'm going to go back into this one last time. I'm going to change this to the three inch box core bit with a sixteenth of an inch cut. Calculate that, select the vectors first, then calculate that, preview that toolpath. There we go. Okay. So spread the lines a little bit wider apart, use my 3 inch bit. Now I've got two cavities that um, my pen and pencil could rest into, uh, whatever the case may be, so they're not rolling around. But this would make it, I could still cover this with felt. I would flock it uh, with glue and flocking instead of an adhesive felt. So that way I don't get wrinkles in the felt when I'm trying to press it down in that. I would just flock it. Um, and uh, that would be, that would be how I would do that, Robert. So Robert, let me know if that helps you out any or anything. Um, basically... We've got two lines here. They're going to use a three inch radius bit, spread them apart, make sure they are short enough so that your bit does not run into the walls of the ends and um, how deep you want this pocket to be for the pins to lay in. Um, that's up to you because don't forget your uh, boxes. 
your lids getting pocketed down. So you've got your lid and everything uh, and all. So make sure your pins can fit in there when your lid closes down. Make sure they're not, your pins not going to hold them up. So make sure this pocket is somewhat deep enough that the box still closes. All right. If Robert's still in, let me know if that helps you. But that would be an option if you want the little grooves for um, your pen and pencil to lay in. Okay. So, all of that. Let's go ahead and open up our new VCAR program. I'm going to create a new file. In this case, it's going to be a two-sided job. We're going to finish this up early tonight, guys. So after we finish this one, it'll be it for the class. Uh, on my box, I'll probably end up making, um, uh, I'll do a pin box and a round box uh, for this example. And so let's go ahead and make this a uh, 21-inch long board that's seven and a quarter. So basically a one by eight, one by eight. And... Um, I'm going to go ahead and take two three quarter inch boards uh, and I'll probably end up gluing them together to make this box. Or I might, if I have a thicker piece of stock or something, you know, run it through the planer and mill it down. But um, let's go ahead and make this box a little bit bigger, just a little bit wider instead of a shallow three quarter inch box. I'm going to go an inch and a quarter. Let's try one and a quarter inches thick. Uh, for me, guys, I work off my waste board. I machine off the bottom of the material, machine bed. So that's what I've got set up. You can work off the top of your material, either way you want to do. But I'm working off the machine bed. And I start from the bottom left corner because of my waste board and all. You can start from the center of your board, however you want to do. Now, my flip direction, I always flip along the Y axis. That's that second icon there. And um, that's what we're going to do on my in this project. All right, first things first, this is a two-sided project, so I'm going to make some alignment holes. Um, I'm going to just, uh, we'll throw one up here in the corner, quarter-inch diameter hole because I use quarter-inch pins, and we'll just throw one somewhere down here. They don't have to be in any specific place uh, unless you have, you know, certain spots uh, that when you flip it over, you know, they've got to be in a certain spot or something like that. That's up to you, but uh, for me... We're just going to go somewhere right there, and I'll move this one up a little bit. There we go. All right, so I got two alignment holes, and I'm going to go ahead while I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and select them, and I'm going to right-click and copy them to the other side. So that way it puts them on the other side. I'm going to transfer from top to bottom. This is how I toggle from the top side to the bottom side. Okay? All right. All right. Let's start off with a circular-shaped one first. Uh, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go with a four inch diameter circle. That's going to be the whole size of my box, four inches in diameter and everything for this little gift box. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and offset it inward a quarter of an inch. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and select that and hold down my control key and just hold down my control key while I drag off a copy of this. It's going to be the top and bottom of my boxes here, the, the lid and base of the box. Let's call it that instead of top and bottom now that we're in a two-sided project. Lid, base, lid, base, okay? All right, on my lid, I'm not going to do any, you know, little monogram carving on the inside. Uh, we'll leave that be. Uh, but uh, on here, uh, instead of just a cavity, I would like to um, have this box kind of divided up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and offset it inward again to create my pocket. Okay, that's going to be my pocket area. And let's go ahead and uh, I'll just go right down the middle. Right down the middle. And I'm not a big fan of straight lines, so we're going to go into node editing, right click. And by the way, node editing, notice you didn't see my mouse come over here to node editing, or I didn't right click and go into node editing. 
I hit the letter N on my keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut. Okay, so when that's selected, if I hit the letter N, it automatically put me in node editing. Right click and I'm going to change this to a Bezier curve and I'm just going to give this a nice subtle little curve. And then what the heck, we'll use the offset of this and we'll offset it uh, outward a quarter of an inch. I'm going to end up centering them anyway. Now on this, I'm going to actually uh, move this one up a little bit like that to make it touch there and there. And then I'm going to take both of these. I'll group them together. And I'm going to hold down my shift key. Uh, grouping together is the group tool right here. Or it's the letter G on your keyboard. Okay. It's G on your keyboard. Uh, what I'm going to do is I group those together so they act as one item. And that way I can select this circle here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my alignment tool and simply uh, center this up. And that inside that circle, I just want a simple center there. Okay. All right. Take my trim tool. I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim. I can't trim on a grouped vector. So I need to select these guys and ungroup the letter U on the keyboard or over here, ungroup in the edit object tools. So now I'm going to take my trim tool and just simply not trim away that line. All right. Notice my line doesn't reach. That's why it disappeared. Extend tool. I'm going to extend this from here to there. Let's make sure down at the bottom here. Yep. Down at the bottom. We'll extend this line from here to there. there we go. All right. Now this one's overextended. So we'll go ahead and just trim that away. Look how it underextended. Don't you just love that? That's all right. The software is smart enough to, it'll fix it. I'm going to trim that away. Oh, is that tool? There we go. All right. Now, once again, I'm going to take my fillet tool, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm using a quarter-inch bit, so I'm going to use an eighth-inch radius here, and I'm going to radius that corner and that corner, this corner and this corner. All right. All right, so this basically minus, let's go one more thing. Let's take this and offset it outward. That's my bottom, offset it outward a 32nd of an inch. Okay, so now we've got our vectors here for a rounded lid box. I'm going to go ahead and kind of move them on my board, just get them over here so I'm minimizing my waist a bit. Uh in case I want to do something else over here, maybe a long box or something, or another set of them or what have you. But I've got these vectors here. Let's go ahead and I need to copy some of these vectors to the other side. I definitely need to copy my lid vectors to the other side. And on this one, I just need to copy my perimeter and the little offset vector. I actually not. Uh, I'm an idiot. No, I don't need that one. Just the perimeter on this one. Those three vectors, I need to right click and copy to the other side. All right, cool. So let's go ahead. This is our bottom. Pocket cuts. Pocket cuts. Profile cut halfway through, which we're going to do in a moment. I'm just talking you through it. But let's go on the top before we get into tool pass and stuff, and let's do some design work. All right, this is my lid over here. You can see the bottom. You can see actually the vectors from the other side. It shows you where they are and all. Uh, just in case you want to do a little inscription on the bottom of the box, right? I usually have felt on the bottom of the box, so an inscription wouldn't help me. But this is the top of my box. I don't really need this vector right here. I just need the outside perimeter. I need to know my top of my box. But the reason why I have that vector there, which I just deleted and undeleted, is because I'm going to use that because I want to do a nice decorative design in here. And for this design, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to borrow a vector from the other program. Let me borrow this. Let me turn off all these layers except for this one. I'm going to borrow this vector right here. So I'm going to hit right click and copy. 
copy. Go into my other Vetric program and paste. All right. Now, my inside vector here, the size of it is three and a half inches. My design, I need to be, oops, not my little alignment tool. My design, I need to size that to three and a half inches. All right. Now, that's grouped together, so I'm just going to hold down my shift key and select this circle right out here. And with my alignment tool, I'm going to align to the center of that to throw it over here on the center. Righto, righto. Now, by doing that, I actually have a duplicate vector situation going on right here. Let me ungroup this vector. U for ungroup. And you'll notice that this vector has a pink line with a black line behind it because it's the same four inch diameter circle as what I had in there before. I don't need both of them. I only need one. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and delete one of them. I should have a nice clean white line back there. Okay. So this is going to be the top of my box, a little decorative carve in the top of my box here. And I'm also going to do a very subtle eighth inch round over on the outside edge. Okay. So I have the base of the box. This is going to be a profile cut cutting halfway through on one side, halfway through on the other. That's going to cut the box out, right? On here, same thing. I'm going to have a profile cut cutting this box entirely out. But before that, I'm going to have a little round over profile toolpath with my round over bit, a little eighth inch round over bit doing around a ridge. I'm going to have a V carved toolpath in here to do this little chip carve kind of look uh, for the lid and all. So before we do the top, let's go back to the bottom, side one, if you will, side one, the bottom. And let's create our tool pass and then we'll go over to the top and create the tool pass for that. So this is a finished project right here as far as drawing is concerned. So let's go over to our tool path side. My first and foremost tool path is going to be my alignment hole tool path. So I'm going to select both of those vectors. And, you know, I'd usually have something else on the board here so I'm not wasting wood or this project would be much smaller. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a pocket or a drilling operation, should I say, not a pocket, a drilling operation. And it's going to be cutting three eighths of an inch deep into the top of my board. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. <clears throat> I want to peck and I want it to retract above the cutting area each time that it pecks down to that three eighths of an inch. So it pulls out the material and cleans out that hole. I don't need it to dwell at the bottom or anything like that. I just need it to peck and so it doesn't just drill that bit straight down three eighths of an inch. This is going to be my side one. We'll call it side one. Board alignment holes. All right, one, two, five, and calculate it out. Awesome. Okay, now my pocket tool path. I'm going to have quite a few pocket tool paths. Uh, pocket tool path, this one's going to be a half inch deep with a quarter inch end mill. And this is my side one i'm going to call this my base um inside pockets 0.25 in mil calculate that out <clears throat> okay uh let's turn those tool pass off all right this vector here and this outside vector here that's going to be another pocket cut Now, I am going to do some carving in here, okay? And 
on the other side, right? I'm carving in the lid. Now, if I pocket this out three eighths of an inch deep, right? Then that means I have three eighths of an inch to work with on the other side. For me, that's fine. You know, but I don't want when I carve down an eighth of an inch on this other side or something, I don't want it too thin, right? So if I said, you know what, I'm going to make this a little bit shallower instead of three eighths of an inch, I'm going to go 0.3, then make sure that this pocket for the base is also the same depth or else you're going to have a big old wide gap in between unless you're going to be creative and put some kind of decorative ring that you're going to cut out there out of a contrasting piece of wood to give a nice little band around the middle, right? Make your brain go boom, right? Think about that. What if you're going to do a nice little decorative ring, like a little band, like, you know, think about that. All right. You could do a nice little thin quarter inch band of a, uh, you know, that's going to fill that gap, but also give that box another little element to make it go, damn, that's a nice looking box. Right. And you would just cut that out of a contrasting piece of wood and you know, then you would cut out the little ring band. Okay. All right. Anyway, we're not doing a band, but if you were, that's what you would do. Right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go 0.3 and uh, 0.3 on this. Uh, I'll give myself a little bit more room for the other side and everything. So instead of 375, I'm going to go 0.3. All right. And uh, no particular reason. I just want to do it to show you that it doesn't always have to be 0.375. Okay. And uh, quarter inch in mill. We're going to calculate that out. Okay, on this toolpath here, let's go ahead and turn off that toolpath. On this pocket here, this inside pocket, uh, that's going to be, I'm going to go 0.31. I'm going to give myself an additional 10 thousandths of an inch so that my lid closes nice and tight and I'm not bottoming me out on that wall. And I'm going to give myself my allowance, negative 0.005. And again, you guys can go with smaller allowances if you want just to really sneak up on it. But that's where I start, five thousandths of an inch. And um, you go ahead and I don't need a ramp on this. And ramps are good, uh, but I haven't been using ramps through this whole project. So we'll go ahead and leave it at that. This is going to be my side one lid. And I didn't name the other one. I got to go back and name the other one. Lid uh, inside. Hold on inside lid pocket 0.25 in mill. We'll calculate that. And let me come back into this toolpath here, this pocket one and rename that because I want to want to give these all names. Uh, let's close the preview so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, I want to rename this. This was my side one base outer outer uh, pocket 0.25 okay so we've got that now we got it comes to the profile cuts now I'm gonna cut halfway through on one side and then halfway through on the other so this is gonna be a profile cut. And I'm going to be cutting uh, three-eighths of an inch deep on one side with my quarter-inch end mill. And I'm going to add some tabs. Might as well do this. Um, I'm going to go a consistent three tabs all the way around. I don't want it on the first start point. Add tabs. So just it randomly throws three tabs around. Here we go. And I'm going to calculate that. This is going to be side one. Final profile. 0.25. And okay. Calculate. Now, I actually want those tabs to be in the same place on the other side. Um, I want those tabs to be in the same place on the other side. So I'm actually going to take uh, these two vectors and I'm actually going to copy them to the other side. Uh, and it's going to end up, I'm done with my tool pass on this side, but when I come over here, what that'll do is I've got duplicates here. Um, 
but and I'll, I'll get rid of one of them in just a moment. But what that's going to do is uh, that's going to put the, that's going to bring the tabs over here too for me as well. And I have duplicates, so if I wanted to properly do this, I could undo that, and I could come in here while I'm on side two and just delete that vector and that vector there, and go back to my side one and do this properly, so it doesn't create duplicates. Copy to other side. That way I don't have duplicates. That'd be the smart way to do it. But I do have the tabs. They're hidden in there, but they are there and they'll be in the same spot. All right, we're on side two now. My first toolpath for side two is going to be my waist board alignment holes. These are going to get cut in the actual waste board of my table. Hopefully you have a waste board on your table if you're doing this two-sided project. Um, so this is going to be a drilling operation and it's only going to cut a quarter of an inch into my waste board with a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to use pecking. This is going to be my waste board alignment holes 0.25 end mill. Very important. Okay. Now we can get down to the design, then we'll preview this whole thing when all the toolpaths are done. All right, on this one, the only thing I have on this one is got my V-carve cut that I'm going to do, and then I've got my profile cuts. So let's focus on the, the V-carve toolpath. So if I come in here and um, select these vectors as they stand. Now, remember, I imported this um, uh, vector in. And I haven't done any drawing or artwork or cleanup on it. I don't even know. You know, I think it's good to go as it is. I'm going to select these inner rings here, and I'm going to go ahead and do a V-carve toolpath. What my goal is, what I'd like to see happen is I'd like to um, – actually, let me turn this one off. I'd like to cut around this uh, and uh, pocket out around this and then pocket out one half of these triangles, and I think that's what I've got here. I don't need this vector selected right there, just that. And so I'm going to V-carve toolpath. I'm going to start at zero because it's the top of my board and nothing's been milled out there. Um, I'm going to have a flat depth of, I'll go an eighth of an inch for now, 0.125. And I, how dramatic I want the angle of the cut Depends on if I'm going to use an 80, 60, 22 degree VB and all that stuff. I'm actually going to use my 90 degree VB. I don't use my 90 very much. I haven't been using it a lot. I've been using, I mean, like 60 is my go-to bit. But I want to I want to get a nice angle on this star uh, pattern, compass star, whatever you want to call it. All right, now, flat depth. Now, I am going to use a flat area clearance tool because I would like uh, my bit to flatten out these areas, uh, you know, an end mill. And I'm going to, because it's a small area, I'm going to use a small bit. So I'm actually going to use my 16th inch end mill for this job. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to calculate this tool path. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me see what that looks like. All right. Now, let's take a look at, let's, let's create the profile cuts on this. And then we'll come back and look and see if I'm happy with this cut. If I'm not happy with this cut, then I'm going to change it. But let's go ahead and create the, let's finish it off. Let's create a profile tool path. Uh, cutting three eighths of an inch deep. On the outside line, make sure I got to go back and check, make sure I wasn't on the line when I did that other profile cut. We're going to have to go back and check that one because it should. Uh, it says it was on the line. Uh, that's on side one I'm talking about. I'm going to add tabs, and it's going to throw those tabs in there. So all I have to do is come down here and hit calculate. Now, this is the final profile. Remember, I said I was going to do a round over two, but uh, real quick, let me take a quick minute to jump over to side one. Let me make sure that that profile cut wasn't on the line and it was that would have been a bad day for me so i want to be on the outside of the line outside of the line i would have been that would have been devastating it would have ruined my project and it's just little things like that you overlook you miss uh you don't pay attention 
because I was cutting on the line earlier, I forgot to change it to the outside of the line. And that could have just, just totally ruined the whole project when I, when I actually carved it. I would have been able to tell in this preview right away that there was a problem before I go and carve on a piece of wood, but still was able to catch it. All right, let's get back over to the other side here. Now, remember I said that I was going to do a round over on the lid. I'm in a nice soft round over. So I'm going to choose that vector there. And this round over gets done, gets cut first before the final profile cut. Uh, and I haven't named any of these, daggummit. I need to name them. But uh, let's do this round over. This round over is going to be a quarter of an inch deep. It's going to be using my white side 2050 round over bit. It's going to be on the outside of the line with an offset of an eighth of an inch, negative 0.125. That's because I want that bit. If we look at that bit again, from the distance from the outer edge of that bit to the inside, that's an eighth of an inch. So I want that bit to come right up to here and cut that corner off and give me a nice round over edge. Okay. That's why it's a negative eighth inch round over. And the reason why it's a quarter inch cut depth, the distance from the bottom of the bit to the top of that round over is a quarter of an inch on my bit. So that's why it's a quarter inch cut depth. All right. Let's go ahead and calculate that. Okay, now let's clean up some things. First of all, profile cut that cuts the part out needs to be last. I need to rename it. This is my side two final profile 0.25 end mill. Now you do not have to name your tool pass, but it sure does make life a lot easier. Uh, let's rename this one. This is gonna be my side two lid round over point two five I'm just gonna go um, WS 20 actually I'm gonna go point one two five RO round over bit okay all right let's see here uh, the V carve Rename that one. That is going to be my side two lid. V carve. 0.25. I got 0.25 in the brain. Uh, 90 DEG V bit. Okay. This is my side two that's the 16th inch pocket clearing side two lid clearing 0 0.0625 in mill all right so now i'm all properly named up okay let's take a look at this project let's see how we did see if i like that lid design or not uh, let's go ahead and go into our 3D view here. We're on the bottom part of our board. Let's get our board into view there. And let's uh, preview all of our tool paths. Okay, preview all tool paths. While that's previewing out, um, Camaro jumps up and says, is it possible to add a T-slot bit tool? A T-slot bit tool. Um, it is. Uh, to the tool database, you mean? Uh, it, it is. Yes, it is. And I'll show you that in just a minute, uh, Camaro. Uh, double tail bits. No, I'm sorry. It won't. Ah. Uh, we can't do a keyhole bit. A keyhole bit is just a smaller version of a T-slot bit. So, no. You would do, basically what you would do is, um, like I have in my tool database here, uh, you see these uh, this category dummy end mills or dummy bits. I have a dummy keyhole bit 
and a dummy dovetail bit for my three eighths inch dovetail bit uh, because we can't draw the undercut in. Uh, it, it won't accept the undercut. Uh, so we cannot draw in that T-slot bit uh, as a form tool. Uh, so you basically create a dummy end mill. The diameter of that bit is going to be the diameter of your keyhole slot. So let's say it's a one-inch diameter keyhole slot bit or whatever, or not key, or, you know, a slot bit. Then it'd be a one-inch diameter here. Uh, your pass depth is how thick that bit is, you know, to get up into the neck type of thing. You know, you want to be able to clear that slot. Uh, whatever your your feed rate on a bit like that would probably be around, I don't know, depending on your machine, uh, 35, 45, somewhere around there. Uh, plunge rate, slow, 10, 10 inches a minute. Um, but uh, you would uh, name it what it is, you know, your slot, you know, your, your T-slot bit, but your diameter is going to be the diameter of, the, of that T-slot bit. Um, and everything and all it does is that you by using a dummy bit it just reads the feeds and speeds and everything off of it um when you're creating those t-hot slot holes or uh it'll read the whole thing when you're um when you're doing you know slots in the top of a table or whatever but no you cannot draw one in you have to use a dummy bit camaro so all right so here is the um bottom of my box let's go ahead and uh go back into that preview for a minute let's change up the uh oak to uh canadian maple here for a second uh give me a nice little uh let's change it to maple maple all right so we've got a nice little uh lid there you know or the you know the little recess and all i could probably do a v-carve in there and all but now let's go ahead and let's flip over to side two all right, and let's preview our tool pass in side two. Now, the wasteboard alignment holes are not going to get cut into the second side of the board. They get cut actually into the wasteboard. So you're going to cut those in the wasteboard, so we're not going to even preview them. So go ahead and confuse you. Let's go ahead and uh, let's preview the uh, tool pass. What I do, click the button that says preview all tool pass and it's still, and I didn't want to do that. There's that round over. Okay. Now, question of the day, my final cut here, cutting three eighths of an inch. Oh, ha, I'm an idiot. Remember I made my board an inch and a quarter? An inch and a quarter deep. That's so I could do deeper pockets and stuff. I forgot that I did that. And uh, yeah, let me change up a couple of things real quick. Ha ha ha. I forgot that I made this box a little bit bigger. So let me change up a couple of things real quick. One, my pocket cut here. Instead of half of an inch, I want to go a full uh, one inch deep. I'm going to go deeper on that. On my profile cut, I'm cutting an inch and a quarter, so I need to cut that to the halfway mark. So one and a quarter divided by two equals 0.65. Calculate that. Let's go to side two. Side two. Let me go back to side one. Because I did make my box a little bit bigger. I'm actually going to take my lip there. And I'm going to go my 375 that I like. 375. Calculate. And on the lid pocket, I'm going to go 0.37 feet. Okay. All right. Let's preview those visible tool paths. Get everything down deeper the way I want it. All 
right, awesome. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, side two. Let's go ahead and change one thing on side two. My final profile cut needs to be 0.625 because my board's an inch and a quarter thick. Calculate that. And on my little uh, V carving here, I went that little decorative V carving on the top of the lid. Um, I went an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, but I'd like it not to be... Uh, I'd like these to be not flattened out right here on the inside here. So let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go 0.2. Calculate. All right, let's preview those tool tool pass again. There we go. And the final cut. Nice. So there's my box. Got a nice little uh, fitted lid box. And on the top side, Got a nice little decorative design carved in with a nice subtle eighth inch round over on the edge, you know, so that'd be a nice little decorative box. Now, I could do a little inscription on the bottom here. If I want to do a little inscription on the bottom, I could add some text in here. Uh, let's throw some text in. Uh, let's throw a name. Um, Let's go Tracy. Let's get that centered up. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And uh, let's weld that. We got to weld that overlaps. Weld. Replace and uh, now I have to remember that I went an inch deep on this side and I only have an inch and a quarter thick, right? So that means I got a quarter of an inch to V carve something in here. Um, that being said, this is going to probably want to cut through the bottom, it's going to probably cut deeper than a quarter of an inch. So I'm definitely going to use my 90 degree V bit to help me prevent that. Um, and let's turn this off um, and uh, use my 90 degree V bit. But just in case, because I know I, I've got an, a quarter of an inch, I am going to limit this to 0.15. And there we go. It didn't even go to 0.15. So, you know, now on the bottom of my box, I might want to my box to have a nice little round over on the bottom, too, instead of a straight edge. We could absolutely do that. We could absolutely come in here and on my round over, I could select this profile here and just add it into it. I don't know if I, I think I would not like the bottom of the box rounded over, but hey, it might make it look a little nicer i don't know but let's preview that tool path you know just give it a subtle round over and there you go all right all right so guys it's 9 24 we're going to take the last six minutes uh we're going to end around 9 30 any questions and everything uh now would be the time to ask them but hopefully this gave you a little idea or put some uh, ideas in your mind of some things to uh uh, think about for little gift boxes. Christmas is right around the corner, right? Little gift boxes and things. Um, you can do some really neat stuff. Uh, you can create some really nice patterns. 
I will make this file available for download in the description. Uh, I'll put it in the description of the video for a digital download. I'll put the link in there for the, the file, uh, as well as the other one. Both files will be in there uh, and give you something to play around with. But this is just one concept. Now, in third, we'll do a class Thursday since Christmas is next week and everything. And in, in, in Thursday class, we're going to be do, working in the Spire. We're going to create a nice little box uh, looking box with a model on it. Uh, but we're going to do magnets. We're going to be using magnets instead of a fitted lid. I'll probably do it both ways with a fitted lid or with magnets. That way you can see the magnet concept. So definitely come back and uh, uh, join me Thursday night. If you happen to be out and about or around uh, at 715, we start. And um, uh, definitely, uh, you know, join me. Uh, on Thursday, and we'll, we'll, we'll work with some models in these boxes. We'll do a nice decorative. We'll do one box, not three or four or five, one box, nice decorative design on it. We'll add some modeling to it and everything. Uh, do a nice little custom model and everything for it and, um, uh, and everything. And we'll do it with magnets or with uh, a fitted lid. Uh, I really like the magnet concept uh, on some of the boxes. Now these are neodymium magnets, you know, rare, magnet, whatever you call it. Them suckers are uh, solid as a rock. Uh, you know, I mean, in this little olive wood box. And also what we're going to talk about next week is how to do a decorative edge profile because we can actually use a route, a profiled router bit uh, that you would make trim or molding out of. Uh, you can actually use that profiled router bit to pro, you know, decorative router, the edge of a box. And we're going to talk about that next week. Our box is going to have a nice decorative edge based on a common profiled router bit that we're going to run around the edge. So we'll talk about that next week. Uh, be sure to join me for that. And um, yeah, that's what we'll be talking about. All right, Robert had uh, one more question. Uh, on your star pattern, how did you select only half of the diamonds for them to carve like that? Well, let's actually look at the design itself. Now, one thing you have to understand about a V-carved toolpath, Robert and everybody, is that a V-carved toolpath actually cuts between the lines and then it skips an area and cuts between the next set of lines, skips an area, cuts between the next set of lines, so on and so forth. So in this case, if you notice my diamonds here, these these out these main part of the outer profile of this star actually is doesn't come to a point. It actually breaks up into this outer perimeter. So what that means is is that my V-carve toolpath, and we'll turn on the toolpath, V-carve lid toolpath, and we'll turn on solid mode. My V-carve toolpath is by having just this design selected, it's carving in between these lines, skipping between these two, carving in between these two, skipping between these two, so on and so forth. So in that case, it's carving this area, skipping this area, and you know, all that little area right there, carving in this area, skipping between these two lines, and carving between here and then skipping between there. And that's the way a, a V-carve toolpath is designed, uh, or, or that's the way it functions. Now, had I had I taken and carved this toolpath, oops, wrong toolpath, sorry, close. Had I carved this toolpath and had this additional vector selected, it'd be a whole different story. It would actually be carving this ring and inside of here, leaving these areas raised. All the blue areas would be raised and all the white areas would be carved down. So if we looked at that and what that would look like as a reverse carving, if we calculated this, okay, if I reset this preview and just preview this toolpath, it's a completely different looking carving. Now I've got this ring and let me, let me try to turn it sideways so you can see it. Uh, what's going to be the best way? It's because it's an optical delusion looking like that. Um, let me add some color to this. 
okay? So it's carving in this ring and carving all these areas, V carving these areas down. Let me see if I can get this uh, so you can see where it's carving. It's carving those areas down and everything. Because I had that extra outer ring selected, it's cutting between these two toolpaths or between these two lines, skipping between these two, cutting between these two, skipping between these two, cutting between these two, skipping, so on and so forth, right? So I didn't want that that very, I didn't want it carved down. I wanted it kind of raised up. So when I created the toolpath, I did not have this vector selected. And therefore, it creates a reverse type carving, and it will carve around everything, leaving that star raised. And let me uh, reset that. Let me come back in here and calculate that. Preview the visible tool pass. There we go. And let me turn the color off so you can see. So it gives me that raised effect in there. You know. So when we look at this um, in its entirety and everything, uh, we've got our nice little rounded over top and bottom. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut that profile out. Cut that profile out to 5 eighths of an inch deep. Carve a little V-carve in there. That V-carve would be done before the profile cutter. It could be done after because we're only cutting halfway through. And then, of course, on the other side, we've got our little inside pockets cutting an inch uh, deep. Now, that pocket did not cut an inch deep. i gotta, I got to see. i got something wrong with this pocket right here. These two pockets did not cut an inch deep. So let's find out what in the world happened there. I bet, you I, I bet you I have it as 0.1 instead of 1 inch deep. I bet you I got it set as 0.1. So let's go back real quick, real quick. Last but not least, uh, base inside pockets, 0.1. That should be 1 inch, 1 inch deep. There you go. All right. So I got a nice little box with one inch deep pockets. I'd probably end up flocking the inside of those as well. Uh, give them a nice little velvet look on the inside and, um, and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, so all in all, not a bad looking little round box. You could do this as a, you could do this with any shape guys, any shape whatsoever. Um, you know, uh, the files here, they've got this round box, two sided round box. And then they've got the single-sided uh, square pin boxes, round box, and a triangular shape box, and a heart shape box for you to play around with, and uh, and all. But use your imagination, come up with something creative. You can have all kinds of neat little stuff. And um, uh, down the road, we're going to get into another box um, that another type of CNC box that actually has a pivoting hinge built into it. Um, I'm, I'm working on that and, uh, that'll be a nice little box too, but hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this. Uh, I don't see any questions pop up besides Roberts, which we just answered. Uh, Ronnie, I really appreciate that. Uh, great class. Thanks. Uh, nice boxes. I appreciate that buddy. And, um, Mike, as always, I appreciate you and, and everything. Um, and I will check out K and J magnet. So, that was a shout out Mike uh, threw out there for uh, checking out KJ magnets for some different magnets and stuff. So I'll definitely check them out and everything. Um, and hopefully this will, you know, give you something, a little something to uh, think about a uh, little, uh, little simple decorative boxes, right? You know, uh, let's turn off, you know, there's a lid of a pin box or that's not the, that's the bottom of a pin box, but uh you know, you've got, we got some boxes. I'll clean up all the tool paths for you and I'll have them separated by what's what. And we'll go from there. But, um, uh, all right guys, until next time, I don't see any more questions pop up. I'll give it just another few seconds, but until next time, I'll see you soon. Notice I pulled my glasses up so I can't see the questions. No, I'm just kidding.
All right. I think we are. I think we're good. All right, everybody. Have a great night. See ya.